हेलो एवरी वन आई एम बैक संयुक्त सक्सेना आई एम अ सर्टिफाइड जेंटेंगल टीचर एंड वी हैव बीन लर्निंग दीज जेंटेंगल ओरिजिनल पैटर्न्स पैटर्न्स व्हिच हैव बीन रिलीज बाय जेंटेंगल हेडक्वार्टर्स एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न्ड अ कपल ऑफ पैटर्न्स बाय नाउ सो एज आई पोस्टेड इन माय लास्ट टीजर टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग द पैटर्न एन इशू राइट so if you had a look on the, my facebook page zayukta zentangal i had also posted a few string ideas uh, hope you tried some of them with the tangle pattern in this you in case you already know how to draw the pattern right so today we'll first learn how to draw the pattern and then we'll draw of uh, one tile using that pattern and using one of the string idea right so let us first learn how to draw the pattern so this is again my scrapbook and uh, we will learn the pattern just like uh, we learned the pattern squid and you realize that the pattern is somewhat inspired um, from the nature pattern any so is also somewhat in looks uh, to me at least inspired from the nature like a jellyfish or something right so it starts with this curve or a c shape if you wish you can make it a double line or leave it the way it is <coughs> sorry and then i'm going to draw these free flowing strands coming out of this c shape first a single line and then going to add two or three auras to it right so that's the basic that's how it starts and then i'm going to just cross it and add another strand drawing behind once you finish the pattern it will uh, somewhat give you the feeling of again a uh, underwater creature like a jellyfish or something looks like inspired from there but we don't know the exact inspiration moreover the inspirations and the actual look of the pattern can vary greatly right so again a third strand and then adding some auras and just drawing randomly not thinking where to add the strand right number of auras also i'm not thinking how many have i added previously just random again crossing it again adding some auras it looks nice if the ends are a bit sharp you know like this right again another one something like this zigzag so i'm constantly drawing behind here since the upper c shape is pretty small and i need to draw a couple of strands emanating there from so i have to draw behind right so just take your time and keep drawing these strands wherever you find place randomly right so this is the basic of the pattern any is you you can draw any number so if you feel there are some spaces left here and there you can add more you can add one like this right right so this is the basic of the pattern in isu how do we generally shade it just add some graphite here from where the lines are emanating darken that place so that it gives the effect of going under and probably some at the ends where the lines are merging it's already dark there so you can highlight it there are various ways right it depends on whether you are using straight auras inside or you are using some other pattern inside so if you want to give variations to your anisu then there are a number of ways instead of drawing straight lines inside and auras you can you know add something else like a pattern inside a pattern just to show you an example this is a tile that i drew 
right it is a white tile and i used the pattern one of the uh, um, border tangles that we learned in our earlier sessions on a matto inside the enisu right this is again a simple tile with just uh, enisu as the highlight right but i have drawn mukas right emanating from that c shape so again this is another variations so these are all tiles that i'll be posting on my facebook page and they have been drawn using those strings right so if you recall the strings so this is the tile using this string right and i used this string and made this tile right so nsu at the four corners and then i had posted another string like these dots and this is the tile that i made using this string right so there's one string left still and we are going to use that string to draw a tile today so this is the string that is left and let us start with our pattern today so what i'm going to do is start here right again started with the c shape right and then instead of those orad lines i'm going to draw some fescues here like these and ora them right an interesting variation it would be i think drawing for the first time so i'm just going to ora this fescue or you can leave it here also if you want it to look like mukas but i am going all the way back right so again another stand strand of fescue again i'm going to add an ora i generally use patterns that we have already learned in our previous session so you can refer to those videos in case you are new to the tangle right again i'm going to add a close aura I'm drawing behind already right so again a variation although the original also looks very nice but it's interesting to try new things at times right so i'm drawing this fescue or a simplified form of mooka whatever you want to call it many of the tangles are overlapping right again one more strand so don't worry about the shape just go free hand right again i'm leaving the string as it is i'm currently working on my main tangle right so there are so many ways you can use the string this is just one way in case you want to try out a different way of using the string please go ahead all right so again a close aura drawing behind rotate your tile wherever you feel the need to so that your hands are comfortable again a close aura right another one here so 
I'm just finding spaces and filling it in with my fescues, right? Another one here. Right, so like to add a few more here and there. Please go ahead. There is no How much and how many do you want to and you feel it is sufficiently crowded yeah you can stop there right so probably one out stems and where the fescue is not visible but going behind my string right right so now since we have added enough i think or one or you can add more i'm now going to ink my string because i wish to you may or may not do it right it's not always necessary only if you wish that the string should show as a part of your drawing you ink it otherwise it's not required right so this is the ring kind of shape that I drew and then I'm going to add some print terms here big ones right like this another one right another one another one so these are nothing but sp just spirals generally drawn anti-clockwise but it is up to you whichever way you are comfortable right So the rest of the space you can either fill in black or you can add some orbs or something like that up to you. I think black would look nice. I'm inking the space leaving a little gap. Right. So the rest of the string entirely up to you want to how do you want to go about it so again I am inking it because I am drawing triangles which would need inked borders or outlines so we will introduce couple of more tangles here right so let us start with the uh, bedweed so I am going to start like this right 
very simple tangle to draw we have already learned how to go about drawing it right line seminating from the same place and at the end of the line I'm adding some weight to give it the look right so after you've reached this point what you can do is the lines coming from some not necessary from this point right and probably yeah I'll think I'll leave it like this and see later on what I want to do and then again I'll again draw one line here and draw a pattern called jungle right so in this section I am drawing the pattern jungle you can also draw some other pattern like finery would go well seeing the you know the section that you have even that pattern would fit in well or any other pattern right so these two portions again I'll do the same exercise bedweed jungle and bedweed right so now that I have filled up all the sections with the two tangles what I'm going to do is start inking my jungle right as you must be aware jungle involves a lot of inking or you wish you may not ink it you may fill up a third pattern inside the boxes right so I like the bold ink portions in jungle so I'm going to ink it right so this is going to take a little while and I will get back. So this is how it looks after I inking the jungle right now let us start shading our tile now. So what I am going to do is add some graphite here inside of this curve. If you wish you can extend these lines in between a bit if you wish to right some thick graphite here from where the fescues or the mochas are emanating from right again giving a border adding some graphite at the ends of the curve that I have drawn right the string so no need to add graphite on the inked portions right so let us now blend it a little with a light hand We don't want the entire section to go grey, so just blend a little, right? Pulling it towards the center. highlighting the curve the string was such so I'm just going with the string 
leaving a highlight in between right and then what we can do is as far as the jungle is concerned just add some graphite on one side thick one right and as far as the bed weeds you can add some graphite under these lines because they are quite thick here so we can take that liberty otherwise you can just add some graphite from the place the lines are emanating or merging right since the bedweed is pretty white spaced here you can add some graphite under the lines also some from the place the lines are emanating and some just a touch under the lines right again the third one so just a touch under the lines not adding too much right so it is now blend it so there is no standard formula for shading with entangle right just do what appeals to your eyes just make sure that shading the whole idea of shading is to have both whites and grays together so there should not be too much white and you should not you know shade in such a way the entire thing goes gray right so that contrast thing is important depth comes automatically so just go by your instincts and just touching on those lines not blending too much right again places from where lines are emanating or merging again just a touch just blurring the line leaving whites in between right these sections are pretty small so not going much into the right and similarly the third one at times the graphite already on your tortlon is enough to handle small sections of shading right you don't really need to go back to the pencil and add some more yeah and then a touch of the white charcoal on the other side of jungle so one side is dark and the other side is highlighted so that it gives a folded look right so use another blending stump or i generally use my hands but you can use another blender right so don't use the one you use for regular graphite
right so you need to be careful because these are pretty bold ink portions so it takes time to dry so just make sure you have given it sufficient time to dry up so i think that's about it there is nothing more that you need to do but if you wish you can highlight these small little intersections you know where there are overlaps at a few places not too much right so just a few places you can add some graphite just to give the effect that they are going under just like hollebog right so at times what is there on your totlon is sufficient for that work so just highlighting a few places not adding much i think the initial work is enough right yeah that's about it so that's a tile with nsu and few more patterns to go along i'm now going to initial it right sign and date it today is the 6th so i'll be posting all these tiles on my page you can have a look you can try out few strings if you wish to right and we'll meet again with another zentangle original somewhat similar to the pattern we have already learned today the pattern is called quib so this pattern is tied at one end with the c shape quib is a pattern which starts with the same way in the same way however both ends are tied with the c shape right we'll see how to draw the pattern so goodbye have a nice day stay safe bye bye